Welcome to What the Flick, Game of Thrones, Season 3, Episode 5. Kissed by Fire. Yes. I'll turn you on a little bit? A little bit. Okay. So the great thing is, is that I just learned uh, shortly that like you uh, called Anna just to sing her the song. And you texted her? No, she texted no. me. I texted you. Well, you guys you. are a special little club, aren't you? Yes, yeah. yes. No one texted you. You know what, man? We've been kissed by fire. <laughs> so I thought the best scene in the show yesterday was the last scene with the Lannisters around their big giant table that nobody ever eats dinner at. And like Tywin is, tells Tyrion that he's going to marry Sansa. And we get that great sort of human reaction from Tyrion. Like, like the, come on. What more? How more are you going to fuck this girl? You've made her life miserable. Right. You've killed her father. You've, you've made ma her, like, date. Well, Joffrey? I don't know if date is the right word. She, but think, with, she thinks her sister's she had the dead. Canoodle, yeah, she, thinks, she had to canoodle with Joffrey. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Uh, and, um, and then he turns it around. Yeah. yeah. That Cersei. was my favorite scene because finally Cersei gets a little bit of what she's put out. You know, she gets her karma. Mm -hmm. And she totally freaking deserves it. She's about to marry a gay guy. Um, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually wouldn't be so bad for her since she doesn't want to sleep with him anyway. I guess it wouldn't be, but she's terrified because she was forced to marry Robert, and mm -hmm. that didn't work out so well for her. Mm -hmm. um, and now she's being forced to marry another person that she's not going to love, and who knows how it's going to work out for her. But in a sense, it worked out ideally with her and Robert. Like, it was a loveless marriage, right? He, he abused her. A little. Please. But she, um, we're, we're sort of glossing over that she actually was affected by being in a loveless marriage. Yes, like, that's interesting. Um, there was, there's, right, there's humanity in her because normally you'd think, what, she married Robert, she had a kid, she, he was, he's now king, she's queen regent, and Robert's dead. Like, it's, it's exactly yeah. what she always wanted, but it isn't. It but turns it out yeah. she wants to be held. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that one scene, I think it was in the first season, where she looked at him and said, did you ever love me? Yeah, and, right, you, right, and I don't right. remember what his response was, but it was something to the effect of no. Yeah. <laughs> I think he said no. Yeah. <laughs> and look, and there's also the daily humiliations that Robert would constantly be sleeping with other women, and now there's going to be the double daily humiliation that Laura S. is going to constantly be sleeping with men. Right? right. And so, and everybody talking behind her back, etc. That was my second favorite scene. Come on, the favorite scene was the Kingslayer telling us the real story of why he mm. slayed the Mad King. Why was that interesting? How is that different than what we believed? How does that change things? Oh, it changes things dramatically as to w what you thought of Jaime. And I I'm going to say something absurd here, uh, which is that I always thought that not that Jaime wasn't necessarily a good guy, but that he was nowhere near as bad as Cersei. He, he was a mixed bag, right? And this confirms totally, and in fact, leaning towards good guy more than bad guy. Yeah, he put, remember we had the conversation about him in an earlier episode this year where he pushed Rickon, Bran. Bran. Bran, whatever, mm -hmm. off the ledge, right? Uh, but it, Cersei made him do it, right? Cersei always makes him do it. So right. she's but I mean, made like, I mean, him. Let's go back to old school Jack. I mean, some sins are unrecoverable and <laughs> no, pushing, pushing a six-year-old boy out a window. A absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's why he's a mixed bag. Right. So he's not clear. Whereas uh, Tyrion is clearly a good guy because Sansa's supposed to be. I mean, I'm not into, you know, gingers with no soul, but like she's supposed to be like that one of the hottest people on the planet, right? Yeah. And he gets her and he's like, oh, don't do that to her. And he'd get the north. Right. Like this that's is a huge a bad area thing. of land. Yeah, yeah. right. And so, no, like that Kingslayer story was awesome because it went from him screwing over the king for the benefit of his father and the Lannisters, mm -hmm. like which is the biggest douche move in the world, to him saving thousands of people's lives and actually being so loyal that he didn't want to help his it, father. It definitely shows that his character is much more complex than people originally thought. And, and one thing that I did find interesting about him is that he refused the milk of the poppy. Yeah. Anyone who refuses the milk of the poppy is an interesting character. No, he's a bad ass. We had we had s talked about a couple either last week or a couple weeks before that clearly th that and I thought that he's going to make a full trance interesting. This is more, which I know the people love when I do that. <laughs> the, uh, uh, but I thought he's going to become a good guy. That this is that this is turning because he already showed his soul by saving Brilliant. Brienne. Yeah. From, from but the this, rape. ironically, I mean, I'm going to slightly take away that pat on the back because it turns out he was partially a good guy all along. It's not right. much of a turn. It doesn't right. take it away. Right. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, don't you dare take. No, I. I uh, it's it, it's and now also because now he like his brother and you got to think that they're going to form. They they 
Jamie always looked at the only one in the family to look after Tyrion in any way. See, that any was kind part of, of why he was partially a good right. guy. And now he's a misfit and an outcast also. Yeah, you know, in the Game of Thrones, you're exactly right. Getting your hand cut off could either mean you're dead because that was your pay, base of power, etc. Right. Or it's the best thing that could happen to you because the writer loves outcasts and misfits and right. guys. So, like all of a sudden, you might get a tremendous amount of power. I mean, Jaime Lannister, Tyrion Lannister combination. All of a sudden, says, you know what? Lannister's not so bad, right? I mean, yeah. the the grandfather, the the dad, or whatever. The world's greatest dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think a lot of people would beg to differ, uh, but I, I'm I'm with all of you guys in that that was a at least for me, the second best scene, yeah. simply on Cersei's smile being swiped away. Oh, I mean, yeah. that whole, that smile the whole time, like, oh, yeah. oh I put it in this deep for yeah. you, right? Uh, and then all of a sudden she's like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, really, really fast about that. What, what I love about that scene is the, the past like two seasons we've had Cersei and Tyrion sort of duking it out in King's Landing and fighting each other. And it's easy to then think, oh, they're the adults. They're the ones with power. But then Tywin comes in and you're like, oh no, they're still children, basically. Yeah. And I love yeah. that. And I love her like saying, I won't marry again. And he's like, yes, you will. And she's like, please don't make me. Like she broke right. down yeah. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is uh, Diana Rigg, what's her name on the show? Olena. What is Lady Olena? Like what's, did she really, like is she up to anything? Like, could yeah, she she's totally up to something. I don't trust her at all. Yeah, she's an amusing character, but she's gonna do something very bad. She gave up the money so fast in that conversation with Tyrion. So can, what do you think? Is she, yeah. is she, can she be trusted? She, I don't think she can be trusted. She's definitely up to something. I like her character. She's definitely amusing, but I'm worried about her manipulating Sansa along with uh, Lady Marjorie. They're gonna do something super shady. I mean, Marjorie already wanted her to uh, marry, is it her gay brother? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and come on, there's something going on. There's super only shady. one person two people who who will actually look out for Sansa. And that's why I think that the, for, for Sansa's purpose, the Tyrion-Sansa marriage actually isn't so bad. I because agree. she the only other person who's gonna look out for Sansa is Shay. And so I imagine that Sansa will say to Tyrion, yeah, I don't care, live with Shay. Have mm -hmm. sex with Shay, we'll put on this, we'll put on this little show if mm -hmm. you can get me out that's of here. But then point. of course at some point that would, that would require Tyrion, which we know has to come anyway to have not just a minor betrayal of the family, but a complete and full betrayal of the family. Right. So the Tyrells I love, the Lady Olena I, I really like, and it's not a matter of good or evil or whether you can trust her or not. Of course you can't trust her, they're smart. They're gonna look out for their own interests. Yeah. Uh, I love the smart characters. Mm -hmm. And she's right up there with Varys. Uh -huh. and, and she's even outshined Tyrion a little bit. Yeah, she so did. To, me, to me, power acquired through strength, just raw strength, or money, or most importantly, being a lord, etc., mm -hmm. is bullshit. It doesn't count, right? Mm -hmm. it, power acquired through your wits, I think, is is awesome. It's That's kind of what why Gendry I talks about. Huh? Gendry kind of talks about that. The difference between following a man who's been chosen by the people and somebody who's just a lord. Oh right, exactly. Who talks uh, about that? Gendry and his conversation with Arya. So that's oh, right, the right, bastard right, of yeah, Robert right, Baratheon, right, the blacksmith. The blacksmith, yeah, and uh, and so that's why I've always loved Varys. I thought, you know, it, he might even be my favorite character, which sounds crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So, but but Lady Olena's right up there. Every time she talks, I'm like, she's gonna say something interesting. She's really <laughs> fucking smart. Really fucking smart. Okay. <laughs> really needs to move her bowels. <laughs> uh, and then he grabs line. one at the end. Right, and then he yeah. takes a fig at the end. Right. So, so that was that. What was her line? She said, uh, I'd like to have a fig. I, I'm paraphrasing. I have a fig every afternoon. I have a fig every afternoon. It helps move the bowels. <laughs> yeah, I was good. Stuff, <laughs> and uh, then now, all of a sudden, the Lord of Light, two things. Number one, it's a lot more complicated than we thought because it has my least favorite ca character, the, red, the lady in red or whatever she is, right? And these guys you like. And these uh, guys without banners who are awesome. <laughs> so it's got both. And then the second thing it does is, oh, now we've got another serious player, okay? Dragons are a serious player, White Walkers are a serious player, people playing games in the middle is like, good luck to you brothers, <laughs> okay? Right, but Lord right. Of Light, somebody who's really good with a sword. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. Great. Good for you. And, yeah. like, and that's why, like, Jamie Lannister, you, uh, you lost your sword hand. 
Trust me, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but Lord of Light can bring back the dead. It can create vag monsters that kill people in the night. Lord of Light is pretty serious badass and could challenge any of those other big powers. So all of a sudden we have a third incredibly serious player that could win. And remember, the prophecy, at least according to the Lady in Red, is that Stannis regains the throne. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, even though he's in the ashes, you think, maybe. Yeah. So Sorry. Uh, um, actually, you go because I have a question about the Hound in that scene with the Stannis, like, like a guy, like again, the, she's the again, she's the she, wh who is she, Lady? What, I mean, the Lady, uh, Vag monster, Lady Melisandre. She's what? a red priest of a shy. Obviously. Can we just keep calling her yeah. Vag yeah. monster? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the red, the red lady works too. Yeah. But so, anyway. like, Stannis seems so wildly insignificant, right? You know, but so insignificant that you know he can't be insignificant, because otherwise, why is he even in it? Uh -huh. Right. Um, and then we get a little taste that, that, that he is significant, and that he, and, and of course we get a little bit of his backstory, and the, I guess the, the, dirt, the death either in utero or stillborn of kids who are kept in these bottles, and they're there, and his wife, is she locked up? Like it seemed uh, no, like the kid is definitely locked up. Yeah. She, I guess she's partly locked she up. She seems partly really locked up because then the kid up. we know because the kid when she talks to the onion, uh, the onion, the onion Night. peeler, um, <laughs> she says to him, you yeah, know, what are they going to do? Lock us in a cell? Like, <laughs> like oh, we're yeah. both in, right. we're both right. locked up anyway. So it, it, two things, Stannis. Everybody calls him honorable, and everybody's like, well, look, no one can dispute Stannis is honorable, right? right? But we've never seen him do a single honorable thing. Nothing. So it must have been in the past, and maybe it'll be in the future. But so far, he's been a totally dishonorable douchebag. Totally. Well, he only <laughs> he only uh, abandoned his uh, uh, d deformed daughter 88%. Yeah. yeah. He still kind of likes her. He right, still but he hasn't likes seen her years. He hasn't seen her years. Right, the Onion Knight, who was his loyal servant for all these years. He's like, whatever, I got this magic lady. Yeah. Okay, you're, and, and you're in a dungeon now. His disservice was recommending that maybe I don't pay so much attention to her. Oh, he tried that to kill her. Yeah, sure, sure. The Onion Knight tried to kill her? He tried to kill her with a dagger. They the showed it in the, earlier this season. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. rushes at her with a dagger. Right, and like, Ren Leo, you're my brother, whatever, Vag Monster. Be done with him, <laughs> right? Right, like no, he's. No, but in that case, he was right. He's the elder brother. No, so I he know did he's right. Point. I know he's right. I don't know. He's it's not, not honorable to ha kill your brother, yeah, because, yeah, especially yeah. with a vag monster. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like well, maybe you fight him with swords. That's you can't seems kill fair. your gay uh, brother with a vag monster. You can't do it. No. Yes. But isn't honor? Isn't it honorable to to for, forestall this massive battle with one vag monster as opposed to two massive armies clashing oh, and thousands you make of people a good die? Lord, with all your justifications oh, okay. and excuses, right? <laughs> and then he's got the dead kids there, you know. So oh, I, I'm not, I'm not by. And then what's okay? I gotta ask you this: the the girl, what is she born with? What it's it, called grayscale. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, and I believe the way they explain oh, it, so it's fatal in she adults. Wasn't, she wasn't burned. No, no, it's just something that like afflicts you when you're young and it starts spreading and it like basically like. I don't know, calcifies part of your body. And, and they put her away because she's an outcast because she's got the, she looks deformed, et cetera. Like they but don't. It also, it, it's also partially like wherever she goes, she's mocked and laughed at. So they hide her away so that she can live with her toys and her books. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I so thought sad. maybe there was a chance she was kissed by fire. <laughs> no. But she, <laughs> no, she wasn't, totally. interestingly yeah. enough. Okay. okay, so I have a question about the scene with the hound getting into the sword fight with one of the dudes from the uh, Men Without Banners, right? So um, why didn't they kill him? Like, I don't understand. They said, no, it's not the right time. And also, I don't really understand, like, the complexity of his character because on one hand, last season, he was trying to help uh, Sansa out. Remember, he's like, I'll take right. you away from here, get you away from Joffrey. But at the same time, Arya wants him dead, and he seems to really dislike Arya. So what's the drums there? Well, like, why right. is... Let me tackle it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I think, okay, first of all, it's going <laughs> to it turn, turn out that he has some honor. Although, again, it's a mixed bag. He killed the butcher's boy. Uh -huh. Right, um, Lord of Light flubbed that one. Right, the Lord. Oh. Right, exactly. <laughs> but he did try to help. A lot of people try to help Sansa. Right, yeah. and he did try to help Sansa. And I'm gonna guess Arya. I, he wouldn't hurt Arya. We know he wouldn't hurt Arya because he didn't hurt Sansa. That's right. my that's my guess. But he like plays so tough. But of course we know he's okay because he's also. <laughs> oh, good point. He's good been point. touched by fire. Yeah, yeah. no, um, and, which and, is and, why and, he freaked point. out, kissed by fire. Which right. is why he. 
wigged out so much with when the sword. with the with the, the fire with the fire sword. And remember, that's why he ran away in the first place in the battle. Uh, Blackwater. Yeah. Bl Bl battle of right. But Blackbeard. Battle of Blackwater. Yes. The you know the head of the banner men, the men without banners. Um, he like guessed that they just th that by losing the fight was a message from the Lord of Light that nope, you can't kill him. Oh, yeah. definitely. And yeah. so she, what well, they interpret say, that as is. The Lord, of the, the Lord of Light is not done with you yet. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so he's going to come back into play and uh -huh. going to help them in some way if you believe the Lord, Lord of Light, et cetera, right? And I've always thought the Hound was going to turn into a good guy. I mean, like, maybe it's because of all my years of experience watching wrestling, uh, when you can see, like, <laughs> oh, he's a bad guy. But one day, he's going to turn into a good guy when he, you know, smashes and, a bad guy in the head with a chair. And he and his brother, <laughs> don't, and he and his brother obviously, are, are enemies. And his brother is it's a bad clearly, guy. He's oh, clearly yeah. a bad guy. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. horse's head off. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So are we going to chat about Daenerys at all? I know she had a very small scene in the was, last episode. A, it was but such I, a great scene. It was a great scene. Um, and I think that, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about the way she's handling these slaves or at this point it's like an army um but okay so she wants to be like very democratic like oh you guys have your slave names get rid of your slave names pick names that you like uh if you don't want to be part of this army you can leave you don't have to be part of it right i get worried about that kind of stuff because i i feel like you just have to be ruthless you know i'm not <laughs> saying abuse them i'm not saying be like the slave master but don't be too democratic you know yeah. what i mean well i do but look so when she uh, freed the, you know, the women who were being raped who then, uh, you know, put the cast says, spell on her husband and killed, like, th this guy, Khal Drogo, who was, like, one of the greatest characters of all time. I was so mad at her perceived weakness. I was like, why? Why did you do that? That's not how it works. The, la the lions eat the lambs and we move on with our lives, yeah. right? And you screwed everything up. But now I view her as me going in for a layup. Okay. okay, and let me explain. I go in for a layup all the time, knowing that about a third of the time I'm gonna get my shit set, okay? <laughs> I get blocked all the time because I'm not that tall and I'm not that good, okay? Mm -hmm. But the closer I am to the basket, the more likely it is that we're gonna score and our team is gonna be better off. So she does those things, even though it is short-term disadvantage, and maybe she can get her shit sent by, mm -hmm. you know, some of the army, et cetera, et cetera. But she thinks in the long run, if I do the right thing, that is what's gonna lead me to victory, and she's been proven right so far. Right. Also, is it really right that sort of the lion's eating the lamb, and then the lion's eat the lambs, and then we move on, and that's how things work? That's arguably actually not really working out for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like no one has really lately thrived in that scenario, because eventually, it's too, many too, lions. too many lions, right? Eventually yeah. two lions meet, and thousands die. So she's trying something else, and it, but look what it did in this case, is that nobody left right literally no one left and then that great scene and i thought of you because i'm a total loser during that scene where he keeps that what was his name gray worm, gray worm yeah. he keeps gray worm because that's the name he had when daenerys uh, tear garden what's her last name <laughs> tear garden <laughs> daenerys stormborn when daenerys stormborn targaryen. Targaryen. daenerys targaryen right when daenerys targaryen <laughs> freed him and that was like and i was like <laughs> yeah. And Absolutely. also, let's not undersell the Jorah conversation that was going on with Barristan Selmy, where yeah. Jorah is like trying to figure out, like, does Barristan know that I was like spying this whole time? Because Barristan could have been on the small council and would have heard that. Thankfully for Jorah, Barristan wasn't on the small council. And does, then does, what, what, Jorah's been spying the whole time. Yeah, you remember in season one, Robert Baratheon wanted uh, her to die. He was getting uh, letters from an informant, and they reveal in season one that that uh, that Jorah's been sending back information at least early on in the time he was Didn't with Daenerys. Did he even walk with Varys at one point? Was that him in Jorah the dungeon in season one? Jorah was letters to Robert about Daenerys. He was sending information to Varys, I believe. To about yeah, they revealed that in the first season. I didn't. Season. I, uh, yeah, um, but, but also, and, were, and based on his information, they were about to kill her when he changed his mind. Right. Yeah. So now he's got her back. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. obviously, we know he's got her back. And, uh, and Barristan is starting to say, well, you know, when we get back, you have a pretty bad reputation. Maybe you shouldn't be around for it. Like, and so Jorah's been her advisor the whole time. Barristan just showed up a week ago, but right. all of a sudden, there's already friction between them. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah, but and getting along. Like, because at it, the same it's, time. At the same time, they were, like, they were like, hey, remember when you killed those 42 guys at the <laughs> Battle of Big Gulch? And he was like, yeah, it was awesome, man. I cut off all their heads. And they're like, Whoa! You know, <laughs> like they were just telling more somebody. stories. As because, usual because, with Game of Thrones, it, that relationship is a mixed bag. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And and uh, look on on Daenerys, 
the thing that drives me crazy about all these fantasy things, as much as I love them, et cetera, is she walked into a fire and walked out with dragons still alive. We don't get to question her anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm anywhere within a seven kingdom perimeter of her, I'm like, what do you need? Right. <laughs> okay. yeah. How can I help? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I love it that, that like, yeah, so what is she worried? That there's going to be 42 deserters? Should be all right. Yeah. 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 Should have yeah. Well, I guess. I guess you guys are right. Is there a way, maybe this is a stupid question, but is there a way to kill the dragons? Because that's kind of one of the only ways that she'll be at a disadvantage if someone finds a way to right. murder. Right. Well, so that's dog. an interesting dog. thing. Like, I don't want John to get into it too much because I'm afraid of spoilers going yeah. forward, right? But my guess is, I mean, their dragons, are, the dragons are, are living beings. Yeah. And, so. there, and then and there were dragons, and then there weren't, so they died. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, and I don't know if they were killed. Maybe they died of old age. Probably, right? <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, <laughs> I know this is hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. Right. like, yeah. no, no, no. But there's, in fact, I'm worried about her that she's going in too early because the dragons are not fully grown. Right. If they're fully grown, it's good night rest of the kingdoms, right? right? right. But Although since the, they're smaller, can you hit them with arrows? I, I believe that archer that's with the men without hats is actually the, the person <laughs> who can beat anybody. Like The Doctors that, Without Borders. Okay, right, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so the hound keeps saying, oh, Archer, oh, what are you gonna do, hit me with your arrow? Yeah, yeah. he's gonna hit you with your, his arrow when you're 100 yards away, right, cause these guys and are you're like, going to die. He's like, oh, the honorable okay. way to fight is with a sword in the battle where we cut each other's hands off, and then eventually one of us chops the other guy's head off. And that guy's like, fuck you. Exactly. Yeah. It's like Indiana Jones. Whatever. Remember right. Indiana Jones oh, right. with the <laughs> shoot his sword guy and then boom, takes out the gun and shoots him. That's a modern day gun is the archer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I think the archer could possibly take down the dragon. So <laughs> do you That's see what I'm saying? Well, look, if they're, they're young enough. Look, I mean, the drag again, the dragons were defeated at some point. Yeah. Somehow. We don't know how, but obviously they were defeated. And I imagine, like you set it up nicely. We have a we have significant rival powers now. I mean, you, the Lord of the Light can resurrect, so mm. that's something. Yeah. So what's going to happen with Tyron Lannister? Because he is definitely on to Lady Marjorie, uh, trying to get Sansa to marry her brother, right? And he she he says, look, this is the key to the North. They're obviously trying to manipulate us, and I'm against that. So is he going to try to undermine the relationship between Joffrey and Marjorie? And it seems like Joffrey is really starting to like. Lady Marjorie. So is he going to get all sassy no. and go against his family? He said okay. he was going to undercut Joffrey. Yeah. He said that last episode. Yeah. Here's gonna, what's going to happen with Tywin Lannister. He has no interest in the intrigue between Joffrey and Marjorie, <laughs> whatever. He's a no-nonsense guy. He's going to be like, oh, there's intrigue, is there? Okay, here's what's happening. I crush you, okay? <laughs> oh, Joffrey, oh, you're going to speak about, oh, you're the king, are you? Oh, are you? You're the yeah. fucking king, Yo. okay? I don't think so. Bam! He's gonna send him halfway across the goddamn Who's, Red Keep. You know who Tywin is? <laughs> Good reference. He's Dick Cheney. Uh huh. Tywin yeah. is Dick Cheney. Oh, totally. But yeah. that's what I've been saying. Yeah. But that's Completely. why I respect him. Yeah. Because I like I respect Dick Cheney. Like he's a bad motherfucker, you know. And mm. and so I, I hate everything he does. But he gets his way, and he's no nonsense. It's like, dude, I'll put you in my goddamn dungeon. Yeah. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. So in essence, he, you know. Tywin Lannister is the real king. Oh, of and, course. And, and, and so Joffrey, of course, of course. Joffrey's right now, like a Tywin's front. king. Uh, I, I wanna, uh, I'm going to make a prediction now. Sometime in this season, Joffrey, either before his death or before his abdication, before his relinquishment of power, uh, cries. <laughs> like, like, yes. like you were gonna get a crying Joffrey. He's or a coward. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's definitely. a perfectly good prediction. Uh, now, and my prediction is that Tywin is missing something gigantic in his arrogance, which is the people who are gonna do him in are his own children. Right. He has mistreated them so badly his whole life. That, I mean, look, Jamie was ready to partly do him in when he was, and you know, serving the Mad King. And that's the child who's gonna do him in. Yeah, the one that he trusted the most right. and loved the most, right. etc. It's entirely possible because he thinks they're not a threat to me and he's concerned about the external threats, when in reality, they're probably the largest threat to him. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, so, last, sorry, go well, ahead. We John. gotta talk about the Rob, his scenes. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was I pretty big. I about that. Oh, yeah. I'm not forgetting. I'm not forgetting. <laughs> okay, I like that scene. Yeah, so I thought I was surprised that Rob cut that the other, the Kerstarks. 
head off. You thought he was going to take the advice of his family, of yeah. everybody, of everybody, yes, and and wife. not lose that whole half of no, his. No, I didn't. I thought he was going to go long term again because he's one of the smart characters. Short term is a devastating blow to his army. Long term, it sends a message: Don't fuck with me. How many times do I have to remind you? Okay, if he had let him live, nobody would have respected yeah. him, and he would have had no chance. He had to do it, even even if uh, his mother or, or uh, his wife had a good point about it. Didn't matter. Like he, he his had to mom do it. really screwed him over by letting the Kingslayer go, and it just drives me crazy every episode. If you hadn't let the Kingslayer, if he hadn't let the two critical things for the Starks, letting the Kingslayer go, and then him marrying the the hot chick with Doctors Without Borders, right? <laughs> okay. If he hadn't done those two things, he still has the car Starks. He still has the phrase. Yeah. And he's marching on him. He's about to become king of the seven I know, kingdoms. But it's, yeah. not, but it's not who he is, though. It's not who he is. Uh, I so, know. but he's but he obviously is totally confident that he can go. Uh, what is it to old man Walter Frey uh -huh. and say, like, yeah, I know, I didn't marry your daughter. Would yeah, you, but what? he's got to give up a dragon to make that deal. <laughs> right. uh, is he and by the way, in is my he own married to Doctors Without Borders, or are yeah, they yeah, just yeah, yeah, he's yeah. married. Right. Yeah, no, and in and in my real life now, I think like if I got to make a deal, I really don't like him. Like, what am I gonna do? I got to give up one of my dragons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we saw we got to go, but we saw uh, uh, four asses. It was a four ass show. Was it? Yeah, yeah, we saw yeah. we saw John. Uh, we saw Jon Snow, yeah. we saw Egret, uh, 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 yeah. uh, and, nice. and, and then we saw the worst name in, in yeah. totally, yeah. yeah. And then we saw Brienne and we saw uh, Jamie. Jamie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. It was a, it no, was five asses. We, we, we also. Asses too, yeah, yeah, oh, the gay the guys. Yeah. I think, oh, right, yeah, I right. think, I think only the too. lover. Right, so. And I thought, Loras is smart. What the hell? Like, you didn't realize that guy who immediately seduced you was a spy? Like, if I'm Loras, I think anybody who's coming to seduce me, yeah. oh, who do you work for? Littlefinger well, or Varys? He's like 17. No, but he's right. also, he's young, and like, you know, there was like, the, there was evidently like a little, you know, they had a little gay communication going mm. on there. Obviously, it's not, it's not easy. Even back <laughs> yeah. then, with the swords and everything, but they still had gay dark. Yeah, they totally, yeah. they did. I, I also love, like, Littlefinger doesn't get enough credit for how, like, how good he is at his job. He uncovered that plot in about one minute of screen time. Right, he that's sends right. the squire, they have sex. I know what's happening. Yeah. And also, Instant. you know he knows that Sansa knows something. Like, that Sansa's been turned. Sansa not trusting him anymore. Because Sansa was like, oh, I'd love to come with you. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> you know why people look out for Sansa? Because she has this unique advantage of being the dumbest person, like, in the Seven Kingdoms. But she's so people are like, ah, oh, God, she's right. such a schmuck. But all right, all right, I'll protect you. She's getting a little smarter. Yeah. She's getting a little uh, smarter. Tiny bit. Everybody has to learn. Right. right and, so and I'm going to love when Rob goes after Castlery Rock. That's gonna be, and when he wins it, it's gonna be awesome. Right, which means he's gotta have the phrase. He's gonna get it He's gonna out. get the he's phrase, got... but he's gonna have to give up a drag. Uh, all right, we're halfway done. Season uh, episode five, five more to go. We're making the turn.